Hello. Uh, so today we're on lesson five. Um, this is on page 223. Lesson five is called They're Growing. It's about ratio graphs. So I've highlighted our learning targets. Uh, we're gonna plot ratios and equivalent ratios on a coordinate plane. Uh, read equivalent ratios from graphs. Use ratio reasoning to determine equivalent ratios from graphs and recognize the graphical representation of equivalent ratios. And one of our keywords here is linear relationship. Okay, linear means line. So whenever you see the word linear, it kind of means line. Down below here, we got our little warm up. Um, it wants us to create a double number line for um, the the scenario of a tree that grows at a constant rate of three feet per year. So it says write a, rep, a ratio to represent the amount of growth in feet to the number of months. So the growth in feet is three feet to, well, we know that there are 12 months in one year, so it's three feet to 12 months. And then to create that double number line, we see we have a line for growth in feet, time in months. They had labeled the months for us, 12, 24, 36, 48. 12 months is one year, 24 months is two years, 36 is three years, and 48 months is four years. And I know that one year is the equivalent to three months, or the relationship is three feet to one year. So I know that for two years, we double that. For three years, we triple it. Four years, we quadruple it. So it's counting by threes, and then I can fill in the in-betweeners there. All right, so the actual activity is going to have to do with the getting warmed up, the getting started, the rectangles. Now you're not gonna do this because I am doing a video for you, but basically on page 239, there are some rectangle cutouts. So I've gone ahead and cut them out and I'm just gonna kind of model and show you how you would do this activity and then we'll fill in the ratio table um, when we're done. So what you would have done was, you, let me move this out of the way. You would have cut out all the rectangles and then you would have labeled them or kind of sorted them um, based on their short side to their long side. So there are two people that kind of sorted them differently. So they are um, grouped, they are all labeled with letters. We got two that say A and B, C, um, D is right here, E, maybe I lost, oh, E is the big one right here, E, F, G is right here, H, I, and J, and K is right there. So here are all of our ratios, um, or short side to long side, so I've kind of already labeled them. So I counted how many squares across was the short side, this was 12. How many squares across was the long side? That is 30. And then I wrote it as a ratio of short side to long side. And I did that on all of these. And this is five to eight. These two A's are the same. I kind of wrote, messed up on that one, but it's two to five. Four to 10, four to seven, eight to 20, seven to 10, three to six, six to nine, 10 to 25, and six to 15 is this F right here. Um, well, what happened was, is that Ava took the A's, the C, let me make sure you can see it, the A, the C, the E, F, G, E, F, G, I'm going to kind of do this from like biggest, smallest to biggest, that'd be kind of cool to see, E, F, G, and J, whoop, okay, so she sorted these together. Right? And why would she sort these together like this? Well, if we look at their short sides, we got two, four, six, eight, ten. Huh. Looks like equivalency, right? Like equivalent ratios. They're counting by twos. And then we look at our long side, we have five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. So two to five is equivalent to four to ten. Two to five is equivalent to six to fifteen. Two to five is equivalent to eight to twenty. And two to five is equivalent to ten to twenty-five. So they are all equivalent ratios, short side to long side. Now, um, Gabriel did it a little bit different. Similar to um, Ava's 
but instead he put these A's with the rectangles um, B, D, H, and I. B, D, H, and I. So we take these away and we replace with these. Like this. B, D, H, and I. So, and K. Let me find K because K was also one that was included. I don't really know. Maybe here? Okay. Well, this is interesting because if you look at their short sides, it goes from two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then their long sides are five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I do a nice job counting um, in order, like order numbers, but I don't know if they're equivalent. Is two to five equivalent to three to six? Remember, equivalent ratios have a multiplicative relationship, and these don't appear to have a multiplicative relationship. But it is interesting in the thinking, like I can see the thinking of why Gabriel would want to sort them that way. So now that we have that, we are going to look at the ratio table that is at the bottom of page 224. There is Ava's group and Gabriel's group. So basically all we're doing is taking the short to long and making a ratio out of it, which is very easy. So the short to long would be two colon five, four colon 10, 12 colon 30. Is this thing moving? Okay. Six colon 15, eight colon 20, 10 colon 25, And then this is Gabriel's group. Two to five, five to eight, six to nine, three to six, seven to 10, four to seven. Fun stuff. So now we're gonna graph that information onto a ratio graph. But you, if you were in my class, you did this on Delta Math. Um, I'm not going to really answer these two questions, um, other than the fact that with Ava's group, um, I noticed that the ratio of short side to long side were equivalent. Gabriel's group, um, the, the lengths of the sides were counting, counting. Let's graph it. So we have Ava's group. So we want short side to long side. So I have to reference the table on the left. So short side to long side. So looking at the table, we have two on the short, five on the long. So over to the graph, we need to do two on the short. This is backwards. I don't like this, but anyways, we wanna be two on the short, five on the long, so it would go right there. I really don't like how they have this table built, but because it should be X, Y, not Y, X. All right, the next one is four to 10, four on the short, 10 on the long. So four on the short, 10 on the long would be right here. And then 12 and 30, just, God, this is gonna mess me up because it's backwards. Ah! That looks right. And then F was six to 15. They're even out, they're out of order too. What is this book trying to do to me? And then eight to 20. And then 10 to 25. 
we go. And what do we notice? A straight line. <laughs> so one thing with ratio graphs, if you do it right, it should create a straight line. I need a ruler. Here, I'll just use this. I need a straight edge. So if you've done it right, if you start at zero, zero, and you kind of line it up with all the dots, you should create a, where's my thumb hit it? You should create a straight line. And any points in between should be equivalent. Yep. Um, well, let's look at Gabriel's group. Let's go ahead and plot his dots and see if we end up with a straight line or if they are equivalent. Because equivalent ratios should make a straight line. So his short and long would be two on the short, five on the long. So that's the same as Ava. And we're going backwards again. And there's his first dot, two on the short, five on the long. Five. This is really not helping you guys um, when we go into the coordinate plane unit for sure. Six and nine, because the way they have you guys plotting these things is backwards. Three and six. Well, it is kind of doing a straight line. Interesting. Seven and ten. Four and seven. Huh. The problem is, is the straight line doesn't start at zero, zero. Because if I were to connect all these, it doesn't go through zero, zero. It should go through zero, zero. And it doesn't. So it is not a ratio graph. All right, well that should, that should be good for um, getting started in activity one. Oop.